am so excited to introduce our next speaker. Governor Jay Inslee has been a tireless environmental champion his entire career. From his early days in Congress where he focused on how Washington State could be a leader in clean energy, to his leadership amongst governors around the nation to uphold the Paris Climate Accord and say, we are still in, to just two days ago signing an executive order to take action to help endangered orcas and salmon. <laughs> Governor Inslee loves and fights for this place we call home. We are so excited for the progress we can make together in 2018. Um, so please join me in welcoming Governor Jay Inslee. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks, Joan. Thanks for your leadership. We in Washington have the luck of the Irish tonight in so many ways. We are lucky to have pound for pound the best organization west of Rome, the Washington Environmental Council. We are lucky to have this organization. We are lucky. We are lucky to have a Senator Cantwell who's going to keep Interior Secretary Zinke's oil-drenched hands off our coastline. We're lucky about that. We are lucky. We are lucky, and think about this. I understand we got a little unlucky in November or so ago, but we are lucky. We are lucky that there is not one single mayor or city councilman or state or nation or international organization has followed Donald Trump over the abyss. The world is rejecting him. He is a blip in time, and we were going to win the battle against climate change. I'm telling you that. We are lucky that we have such a cavalcade of leadership that are leading this state to be in tune with its heart, which is a connection to the most wonderful state uh, ever developed. And some of them are here tonight. I got to tell you, I feel blessed that we have one of the best labor leaders in America helping the environmental community, Jeff Johnson, who's here tonight. Jeff, thanks for what you're doing, buddy. I feel lucky. Now, we got some old hands who've been doing good work. Tom and Sonia Campion, Ron Shear, David and Mary Ann Tagney. We got some folks who've been around for, you know, a couple decades, give or take. But we got young leadership, and we got diverse leadership. And this inspires me. I just met a young man named Guillermo Magoyan. Guillermo graduated from the University of Washington Thursday. He's working with the Latino organization making sure that people in Federal Way on North and the Latino, the Latino community are allied with this effort. Could you stand up, Guillermo? I want to give you a round of applause. You are an inspiration to us. Stand up, buddy. Appreciate what you're doing. Thank you. We are lucky that we have such a successful, sophisticated, great alliance of people who are working on a potential initiative to, in fact, put a price on carbon in the state of Washington. And they are doing a great job, and they're working together. And I got to tell you, when I go around the country, I hear people talking about this alliance. They say, what's your secret sauce? You get all these people from diverse communities working together at the same table. We're an inspiration to the rest of the country, and we should not forget that. And yes, I believe we are lucky to have a governor who's going to stand up and make sure the orcas are here for the next thousand years, too. I, I believe that, too. So we have, we have a lot to feel we have the luck of the Irish, but we've had challenges, as any organization do, and I just want to talk about this. Uh, let me just talk briefly about the orcas, what, what inspired me on this effort. 
Uh, we all have something special in our lives that we keep close for the decades. For me, it was a moment when I was on an eight-foot rowboat with my dad. I was about six years old. We were up in the San Juans off of San Juan Island, and we went out in a really, really foggy day, and we were out there fishing. And all of a sudden, I started to hear this, just this, oh, oh, this like deep breathing that sounded like it was resonating from the bottom of the ocean, and it was circling us. And it would every, you know, 60, 80 seconds, you'd hear this in and out respiration. And it's nothing like I'd ever heard. And I said, Dad, you know, what is that? And he goes, well, I don't, sure, son, for sure, but I, I, think, it's, I think it's a killer whale. <laughs> now, he didn't say, he didn't say, I think it's a, a, a mega a fauna cetacean. <laughs> he said it's a killer whale. Now, I didn't know much about killer whales at the time. That sounded relatively disturbing to me at the time <laughs> in eight-foot boat. And, and, it, and it, just, it just kept circling. And that sound, I have never forgotten that sound. It, was, it still resonates me. And finally it came in, so we saw just kind of the black outlines. But that dorsal fin is something that is, is I think, in everyone's heart, in seven million hearts in the state of Washington. And now it must be in our hands and in our action. And I'm committed to the state to take action to make sure that we save these species. But, but when I announced this, I said something that I think is important. This is not going to be easy. Every single community is, need, is going to need to pitch in. Every single community, from the harvest community, the ag community, to the industrial community, to the large organizations, we all have to pitch in. This is not going to be like a walk in the park. But I believe it's worth doing. It's just an investment worth making. And I believe we got 7 million Washingtonians with us. I'll leave you with this one thought. We've had some good wins this year, but we had one that perhaps was the one most important on climate change. And to quote Maxwell Smart, we missed it by that much. <laughs> I look forward. I feel lucky that we have a chance to elect some new legislators that are actually going to give us the votes that we need in 2019 to get this job done. But in the words of another climate leader, um, Arnold Schwarzenegger, we'll be back. And we will be back until we get this job done. And for those of you in this community who on occasion, on occasion think, geez, I've been at this for 20, 30 years and I've been at this for 20 or 30 years, and we haven't solved all our problems yet. And it's possible in the dark ignorance of Donald Trump to become somewhat discouraged on occasion. I think it's important. I think it's important for this community to think the way the suffragettes thought, who worked for decades and went through loss after loss after loss and Washington was the first place to make sure women could vote in our own decision. I think we need to think, we need to think, we need to think like the civil rights leaders who got their heads beat in on the Edmund Pettus Bridge and for years marched and gave blood for what they believed in. And that took decades. And Martin Luther King was, was right. The arc of the moral universe is long and we are in a long process but it is bending to justice, and we are going to get there. Let's make sure it happens. Good luck. Thanks a lot. <laughs>